Today on Internet Marketing Pro, we're going to cover 50 simple ways to gain RSS feed subscribers. Are you legally minimizing your future tax burden and staying compliant in today's complex tax code? Whether you need tax return filing, planning, bookkeeping, financial statements, full service payroll, or corporate or individual tax return, I personally use and highly recommend the services of Jeffrey Ressler, CPA, whose phone number is 561-237-5264. That phone number again is 561-237-5264. You can visit his website at jrcpa.net. That's jr cpa.net. Tell Jeff that Chad sent you to receive a discount for listening to this show. Thank you very much. Remember, you can always look to the audio and video description of this post for names and phone numbers and links to references made during the program, or you can get them by visiting cdecker.com, chaddecker.com, or ezinegenerator.com anytime as well. Broadcasting from the hot sun and rain off the Atlantic Ocean in Boca Raton, Florida, Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I am your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to our Internet Marketing Pro and EZGenerator.com podcast show. Our shows will cover how to grow your business as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, entrepreneurism, and preeminent professional Internet marketers. Thank you for tuning into our show as we begin this adventure together exploring many great things to come. Now, let's cover a few quick announcements before we get started. Like I always begin my shows, I really like to show my personal appreciation for all the feedback that we have been getting from you. What a difference it makes in motivating me to put these shows out and continually think of the next subject matter that we can explore together. We are always very excited about you helping us get more subscribers, so how about you subscribe yourself? And how about you share this content with your social networks and recommend them to do so too? Together we are building our internet marketing community around this program, as well as others in our syndicate. Our weekly listener base is growing a great deal week after week, and that's the greatest payoff our listening syndicate can do for the community and for me in giving back for my time and efforts in putting this show together for you. If you like our show and find it resourceful, please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment, subscribe, and that'll be great if you do. I really appreciate it. Now, be sure to visit ezinegenerator.com and become a free member of our highly resourceful total online marketing presence community. You will gain instant access to thousands of over-the-shoulder how-to videos and articles, RSS feed syndications to over 500 resource websites relating to total online presence, covering topics like analytics, content, email marketing, mobile marketing, search engine optimization, social network marketing and management, traffic, articles, white paper, podcast interviews of preeminent leaders, current events, and much, much more. Whew. The entire topic collectives are consolidated into a single source content aggregation website community. Consider it your very own internet marketing community newsstand. I greatly appreciate your efforts and support. And finally, be sure to review our past archive shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Smart Radio, YouTube, and Zoom. Now, let's get down to business. Today, we got a really awesome show, and people kind of overlook this, the importance of having an RSS feed on their website. You might ask, what is an RSS feed? Well, it's a way to be able to syndicate on your blog all the information and material that you post on your blog to other blogs and other websites or people that have uh, RSS feed catchers. And also, that's kind of what ezinegenerator.com does. It catches uh, hundreds of websites, RSS feeds, so that you can go to one single place and basically have an 80,000-foot view of over 500 websites and all the articles that are being offered. So that would basically tally up to thousands of articles that are at your fingertips within minutes. You can scan the headlines and get the information that you're looking for. But it's very important for you in order to pick up traffic, build a list, get more attention, to definitely have an RSS feed associated with whatever it is that you do. So we're going to cover 50 simple ways to gain those subscribers for your RSS feed. So I'm going to dive right back, dive right into it right now. And most bloggers love their RSS readers. Not only that, but they also love to gain new RSS readers. It is such a joy when you wake up one day and you see that your feed burner account jumped by two or 300 you know, people overnight, right? Well, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but I do, and it's awesome. You know, those days are quite rare, though, and, and most people seem to have a hard time gaining even a small number of new RSS subscribers consistently. 
Is there anything that you can do about it? Well, anyway, to efficiently attract more RSS feed subscribers, you've got to do a number of things. So many people have written about the topic in the past, but I wanted to give my take on the issue too by you know covering it in this podcast. And I've written down 50 ideas as they were coming to my head when I was thinking of this show. So I'm going to briefly go over them. So I hope that you enjoy them. And uh, you, you might, you might want to write them down or listen to this program over again. So why don't you grab a pen and a paper and be prepared to take some notes because this is, is quite a list. But the show's time is going to be relatively reasonable. Like I said, I'm going to keep it right to the point. Uh, right, qu- quick little summary for each little point. Here we go. Number one, have a big RSS icon. People are lazy. You know, you need to keep the fact always in mind. If you use a little RSS icon, visitors might have a problem finding it. Most of those will just give up after a couple of seconds. So make sure that your RSS icon is big and easily recognizable. Number two, display the RSS icon above the fold. Apart from using a big RSS icon, may, you know, must make sure that you also display above the fold. That is where most blogs have one. And that is where people are used to looking for it when they want to subscribe. So go with the flow. <laughs> Number three, display the RSS icon on every page of your blog. When I started blogging, I did this mistake. My only place that I posted my RSS icon in the beginning was my home page. And uh, as soon as I added it to every single page on my blog, the number of subscribers jumped substantially. Number four, use words. Depending on your audience, just using the RSS icon might not be effective. If they aren't tech savvy, they might not know what that little orange thing is. And in those cases, you can write a small message explaining that subscribing will allow them to keep updated with your posts and so on. Number five, write a post asking for people to subscribe. Ever heard of saying, ask and thou shalt receive? This principle works on most areas of our lives. Blogging is no exception, either is podcasting. If you want people to subscribe to your feed or show, ask them to. Write in a post about it. Give them some reasons that you will see how they respond, and you might be amazed on what you find out. Number six, use the FeedSmith plugin if you use WordPress. Unless you handle code a lot or redirects on your blog, readers will still be able to subscribe to different RSS feeds provided by WordPress. This plugin will make sure that all of your subscribers will be forwarded to the FeedBurner feed so that you can track them and control how your feed is formatted. Number seven, offer email subscriptions. Like it or not, only a small percentage of the internet users know about or use RSS feeds. Studies confirm that this number is below 10% around the world. Why would you want to miss the other 90% of the pie? If you use FeedBurner, you just need to go on the Publicize tab to activate your email subscriptions. Number eight, use an email subscription form. For most bloggers, an email subscription form will convert better than a simple subscribe via email link. That is because the internet users are used to seeing those forms around the internet. And typing their email addresses there is quite intuitive. The top of your sidebar is a good spot to place one. Number nine, encourage readers to subscribe at the bottom of every post. Apart from having an RSS icon and email subscription form above the fold, it is also important to place them below each and every single post. Why? Because right after people finish reading your articles, they will look for something to do next and subscribing to your blog is a good option. Additionally, if the article they just read was really good, they will be on the right mindset to subscribe and receive more of your articles in the future. Number 10, as a few steps as possible, people are lazy. I know, I mentioned it before, but it's worth re-emphasizing. The fewer the steps required for them to subscribe to your blog, the better. If you can reduce the number of clicks required, therefore, do it. Number 11, use icons to offer subscription on the most popular RSS readers. One uh, practical thing that you can do is to reduce the number of steps required to subscribe to your feed is to use RSS reader specific icons, add to Google Reader or subscribe to blog lines. Just analyze the most common RSS readers among your subscribers and add those icons to the sidebar. Number 12, have a clear and focus on your blog. If you write about 10 different topics, it would be hard to convince people to subscribe to your blog. They might like your articles about technology, but they would hate to receive the house cleaning ones. Having a clear focus is one of the most efficient ways to attract subscribers. Number 13, publish new posts frequently and consistently. 
By frequently, I mean publishing posts many times per week or even per day. And by consistently, I mean sticking with that frequency religiously. Those two factors will communicate to the visitors that your blog is active and that subscribing to the RSS feed might be in their best interest and a way to stay updated with it indeed. Number 14, don't exaggerate. While writing many posts per week or per day is usually a good thing, there is a limit too. Many people mention that if a certain blog starts overwhelming them with dozens of new posts a day, they will just unsubscribe. The exceptions to this rule are the blogs on fast-paced niches like gadget news. Number 15, write valuable content. People will only subscribe to your RS feed if there is something of value that they can derive it from. The value might come from different factors depending on your audience. It may come from the breaking news that you offer, from the deep analysis that you write, or from the funny things that you say and so on, but it must be there. Number 16, write unique content. Your content might be valuable, but if people can find it elsewhere, they will have no reason to subscribe to your RSS feed. For example, suppose you copy all posts from a popular blog on your niche, say Lifehacker. Your content would be still valuable, but it would not be unique, and most people would end up subscribing to the other original source. Number 17, don't ramble and go off topic. If your blog has a clear focus, as we suggest before, readers will subscribe to it for a very specific reason. If you then start writing about off-topic stuff, it will annoy the great part of them. So just consider that a bad or unrelated post is the worst than no post of all, since it might have some of your readers actually unsubscribe. Number 18, use your RSS feed link when commenting on other blogs. Many bloggers have the habit of commenting on other people's blogs. Some do it with simply to join the conversation. Others because they want to promote their own blogs and generate some traffic. Either way, you can leave your RSS feed link instead of the website one to encourage people to subscribe to your feed. If you use FeedBurner, they will be able to see your content anyway. Number 19, run a contest. Contests are very popular on the blogosphere. If you have a somewhat popular blog, in fact, it is not difficult to raise some prizes and create one. By making subscribers to your RSS feed a requirement to participate, you could quickly boost the number of subscribers that you have. And if you want to control who is going to take this action, use the email subscription method. Number 20, offer random prizes to your subscribers. If you are not a fan of contests and competitions, you could always entice people to subscribe to your RSS feed by giving away random prizes. For example, if some company approaches you to donate some free copies of its product, you could in turn donate it to your subscribers. Number 21, write guest posts. Guest posts represent a very efficient technique for generating both brand awareness and traffic. If your guest blog on a popular blog on your in the same niche, there is also a good chance that a good percentage of that incoming traffic will end up subscribing to your feed. Number 22, welcome the new readers. Whenever you manage to land a guest post on a really popular blog, or when you get mentioned on a larger website or mainstream site, it could be a good idea to write a specific post to welcome those readers. Use that post to describe your blog briefly, to talk a bit about yourself, and to encourage them to subscribe. Number 23, go popular on social bookmarking sites. Some people say that the quality of the traffic coming from social bookmarking sites like Dig and StumbleUpon is very low. This is true in some, to some extent because those visitors will rarely click on anything on your page, including the subscribe link, because of the sheer amount of traffic that you will get from these sites, but they won't be really quality traffic. However, even a really small conversion rate could easily mean two or 300 new subscribers in a matter of 24 hours. Number 24, explain to your readers what is RSS. As we mentioned before, it is estimated that less than 10% of the popular public know about or use RSS feeds. Can you do anything about this? Sure you can. Write a post teaching your readers what RSS is, why is it good, how they can start using it themselves, and how it works particularly well on blogs that have a non-techie savvy audience. Number 25 and halfway through, have a special subscribe page with all the info and links there. Apart from writing a specific post teaching your readers about RSS, you can also create a specific subscribe page on your blog where you explain briefly how to use RSS feeds. 
and place all the subscription links, badges, and email forms. You could then link the page from the sidebar with the link that could say subscription options or how to subscribe. Number 26, create a landing page on your blog to convert visitors into subscribers. If you are going to purchase some uh, banners or some other type of advertising, it is highly recommended that you create a landing page to receive those visitors in, on the best way possible. And use that page also to describe like your blog or to highlight its contents and to ask them to subscribe. When doing guest blogging, you could use this page as a byline uh, link as well. Number 27, send traffic to that page using PPC. Uh, Pay-per-click uh, advertising like Google AdWords is one of the cheapest ways to send traffic to your site. Depending on the quality score that you get, this is calculated from the AdWords site. You could start getting visitors as low as one cent each. That is with $100. You could send up to 10,000 visitors to your landing page with a 1% conversion rate and this would mean 100 new subscribers. 28. Write an ebook and ask people to subscribe in order to download it. Whether you like them or not, ebooks are part of the internet and many people write them and many others download and read them. Uh, if the content and the promotion are well structured, you have thousands of people wanting to read yours. And what if then the people required were required to subscribe first before they can download it? That would bring a heck of a lot of new subscribers. Number 29, launch an email newsletter with AWeber. An email newsletter can be used to complement the content on most blogs. You can send a weekly email to those subscribers with your insider views of your niche and with some extra tips, tools, and so on. And if you then choose AWeber for your newsletter, you can use the blog broadcast feature to turn those newsletter subscribers into RSS readers too. They will receive a weekly summary from your feed. Number 30, offer a full feed. If your goal is to have as many subscribers as possible, then offering a full RSS feed is the only way to go. Many people get annoyed by partial feeds, and even that does not discourage them from subscribing at first, but it might make them unsubscribe shortly after. Number 31, clutter your website with ads. Well, don't do this. This point is funny and weird addition to the list, and I don't recommend anyone doing it. I didn't invent this, and I saw some people in the past take, talking about it, and the idea is simple. If you clutter your website with many flashy and intrusive ads, but offer top quality content anyway, some people might get an urge to subscribe to your RS feed just to avoid the clutter on the website. Number 32, don't clutter your RSS feed with ads. Just as too many ads on your website can scare visitors away, too many ads or badges or links on your RSS feed can make people unsubscribe. Keep the RSS feed as clean as possible, and that is what people expect to have when they subscribe to an XML file after all. Number 33, use social proof. Ever enter into a restaurant because the place was packed with people or didn't enter one because it was empty? That is social proof in action. If you have a good number of RSS subscribers already, I would say over 500, you could display it on your website using the feed burner feed count widget. This might motivate people to give your RSS feed a shot. Number 34, offer breaking news. RSS feeds are one of the most efficient ways to keep up with the sales, the sites, I'm sorry, that are frequently updated with information that you care about. If you manage to break some news or to offer frequent updates on popular topics like stock market alerts, people would have a stronger motivation to subscribe. Number 35, mention that subscribing to your blog is free. It might sound strange, but many people actually get confused with the subscribe terminology. I received dozens of emails over the past year from people that wanted to know if there was any cost associated with subscribing to my RSS feed. To avoid any confusion, it could be worth mentioning that subscribing to your RSS blog is free. So instead of subscribe to my RSS feed, you could say receive our updates for free. Number 36, use pop-ups to encourage subscription to your newsletter. Well, if you go to my site, chaddecker.com or cdecker.com, you'll see on occasionally different pages uh, where needed, a pop-up will pop up on the screen trying to get your get you to subscribe. And this works a great deal and will increase the conversion rate of people that are visiting your website that will fill out the form. And of course, I give you some really great nuggets and information for free for doing so. 
Uh, number 37, use an animated RSS feed icon to draw attention. Animate ads get a much higher click-through rate exactly because they move around and draw people's attention. You can use the same technique with your RSS feed icon and make it an animated GIF to call the attention to visitors. All you have to do is use a search engine to look for one. Number 38, use feed directories. Don't expect to receive hundreds of new subscribers by using this technique, but every small bit helps, right? Right. Some people use feed directories to find new RSS feeds and content to subscribe to. So if you have some time, you could submit yours to those sites. Here is a list of almost 20 free directories if you go into the description of the show. Number 39. Email first-time commenters, encouraging them to subscribe. Sending a personal email to your first-time commenters is a kind gesture, and many will thank you for that. You could use this opportunity to remind them that they can stay updated with your blog via the RSS feed. There is also a plugin called Comment Relish that can be can automate this process, although it becomes less personal. Number 40, make sure the feed auto-discovery feature is working. Most modern browsers have an auto-discovery feature that try to identify if the website you are visiting has a valid RSS feed. If they do, the browser will present a small RSS icon on the right hand of the address bar. So make sure that you're, you can see the icon while visiting your blog and click on it to see if the right RSS feed will pop. On WordPress, you can edit this part on the header dot PHP file within the file transfer protocol of your system or website. Number 41, offer a comments feed. If you have an active community of readers who often engage in discussions on the comments section of your blog, you could consider offering a comments RSS feed. Number 42, offer a category feeds. If you have many categories on your blog, you could offer an RSS feed for each of them individually. This would enable visitors that are interested in only one specific or a variety of specific topics to subscribe to them and not to get the the whole blog's uh, information, but just the information in the categories of their choice. Number 43, run periodic checks on your feeds. If you know, it is not rare to find blogs around the web with broken RSS feeds. Click on your own feed every once in a while to make sure that the link is working, that the feed is working, and that the valid XML is documented. Number 44, recover unverified email subscribers. You will notice that a good percentage of your email subscribers will never confirm their subscription. Some are lazy. Some just don't understand the process. This percentage can go as high as 30%, so you could end up losing many would-be subscribers there. Fortunately, you can email those unverified subscribers and remind them about the problem. It works for some. 45, leverages existing blog or audience. If you already have a popular blog, newsletter, forum, Twitter account, and so on, you could leverage that presence and get new subscribers. People that already follow you in some place will have a higher chance of subscribing to your new blog, especially if they like your work or the person that you are. Number 46. Use cross-feed promotion. Find some related blogs that have a similar RSS subscriber base and propose to the blogger to use the cross-feed promotion deal. That is, you promote his blog on your feed footer and he promotes your blog on his feed program, footer. Sorry. Number 47, use testimonials on your subscribe page. You probably have seen how most product sales pages on, web, on the web use testimonials, right? Well, that is because personal recommendations from third party goes a long way in convincing a prospect. If that is the case, why not use testimonials to convince people to subscribe to your RSS feed? Number 48, Get friends to recommend your site and your RSS feed on their blog. Even stronger than having a testimonial on your subscribe page is to have someone recommend you on his or her own blog or website. Many of his or her readers will pay attention to the message and head over to your blog to check out what the fuss is all about. Number 49. Do something funny or weird while asking people to subscribe. People love blogs with the sense of humor. If you can make them laugh, you have them hooked, then halfway into subscribing. So, some months ago, I published this uh, huge RSS icon experiment, and I gained almost 300 new subscribers in just three days. Number 50. Start a long series so people subscribe to keep updated with it. 
Long and structured series of posts are not only traffic magnets, but also RSS feed readers and podcasting subscribers. If a casual visitor discovers that you are publishing a long series about a topic he is interested in, he will think about and to subscribe in order to not miss any future posts of the series. So, we are at the top of 50 tips on RSS feeds. So, if you have come this far in this audio program, you should already be convinced that you need to grab the pen and paper and listen to this program again and write all these down. Or maybe you can remember the ones that most stand out to you right away. And go ahead and take action and get those things done. If you need help getting an RSS feed up for your blog or website, please feel free to contact me, Chad Deckard, at chad at chaddeckard.com is my email. And Chad Deckard is spelled C-H-A-D-D-E-C-K-A-R-D. And I will be glad to uh, help you get your RSS feed up and going and help you find the syndication and get off to a flying start. Well, that is about the end of uh, this show. And uh, if you like my show, please consider subscribing to it, which you can do by visiting my website, chaddecker.com. Or if you are an iTunes or Stitcher smart radio listener, take it with you wherever you go on your mobile device. If you like my show and find it resourceful, please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment, and subscribe to my show. I greatly appreciate your efforts and support, and you are part of what makes this show a success. Well, that's about it for this show. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be, across the nation and around the world. This is Chad Deckard signing off. Goodbye for now.